Welcome to Magical Women's new series, The Winner's Circle, a series of episodes dedicated to magical women who have been recognized in the industry and awarded for their stellar creativity and performances. Hi, it's Helen Coglin here in Australia. Welcome to our magic shed. This is where dad designs and builds all of our magic and escapes. I'd like to show you a trick uh, that I've been doing for years. It's one of my favorites and I do believe it is the only one of its kind in the world. It's a trick using my grandfather's old tennis racket. He doesn't use it anymore. He's dead. There's the cover and I can show you the cover. There's nothing in that whatsoever. Take the racket, put it in there. And there's just one word of warning with this trick. Don't blink or you'll miss it. Why don't you start by telling us what it was like to work with your father, be an assistant to your father, and to actually perform your father's material? Well, working with dad, like I've been working with dad since I was a teenager. I left school and started working in dad's show, and that was quite a long time ago. So we, and we're a very close-knit family to start with, and dad and I are especially close. If we're on stage, for example, and something by some chance something goes wrong or something's not quite right, it's just a look and the other person will know, okay, we need to change something or do it. So when you've got a relationship that special on stage, it really works. With him building the magic and especially the escapes, that is really good because dad's brain works like no one else's brain that I've ever met before. And I think that's why it's been so successful for him. Um, and it's good because we can bounce things off each other. He might come up with an escape. And before he'll actually tell me how it's done, because I know how, how his brain works, he will say, what do you think of this? Or how do you think it is done? And if I can't come up with the answer, if I have no idea, I think he realizes he's onto a winner there. Um, and I put Dad and I, our relationship, our professional relationship down to almost like a, a songwriting duo because dad's obviously the brains behind of this. He, he's the one that comes up with all the magic and the escapes. But in essence, I put it down to like dad's the songwriter. He will come up with the songs and I will go out and perform. So from that point of view, it's if you understand, it's almost like, as I said, a songwriting duo. So he, he uh, comes up with, with everything. I go out and perform it. And together, and especially the last few years with Penn and Teller, it has been very successful. Well, it's it's remarkable what you've both achieved, and uh, and uh, literally uh, with magic that has never been seen before and presented in the manner that you presented. It. It's it's just yeah, it, exciting. Exactly, and that's what I mean with Dad. He 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 comes up with things that hasn't. Um, that haven't been seen before and I think that especially with Penn and Teller that is the secret to his success because it is completely brand new brand new methods which the boys have never seen before and told you I could push this rod all the way through the glass of milk you might think that was impossible but we all know with magic that sometimes the impossible is actually possible Take that right out the other end. Take the top cap off. Take off the tube. And all I can say is cheers. You have an inventor in your pocket. Oh, absolutely. It's so good. It's really good. Yeah. I think we all want an inventor in our pocket. <laughs> oh, well, honestly, Connie, I am so lucky to have him. And Dad's 88. He'll be 89 um, in a few months' time. But his brain never stops and he's always coming up with new and different ways of doing things. You were the first female in the world to perform Houdini's water torture cell successfully on television and survive. Successfully, yes, yes. That I did. I've actually done that twice. Once was the first time I did that, I was 21. And I did that pretty much as a challenge because there were a few uh, magicians sitting around. We had a theatre restaurant at the time and a few magicians came in that night. And after the show, they were just talking about magic and escapology. And they were saying that escapology is a male domain, like women couldn't do, do, couldn't do escapes. 
that sounds like a challenge if ever I've heard one. So the next thing, it sort of grew a little bit out of hand because I said, oh, yeah, I could do that. I had a water torture chamber being delivered. And then a few years later, I was asked to perform it on a, um, we had a midday show here in Australia, a national television show, and that was live to air. So I did it for the second time and obviously successful again. <laughs> Now, what kind of training did you have to do for that? Did you did you do um, breath control, or or you just jumped in literally head <laughs> first? Pretty much so. And you know what? I look back now and I think, oh my gosh, how silly! I did not do a little bit more training for that. I practiced. This is very technical. In the bathtub, holding holding my breath for two minutes. Because the whole idea, Houdini did it in two minutes. I wanted to do it in minute 50. And um, my outside crew knew that if I wasn't out within two minutes to smash the glass, because I could only hold my breath for two minutes. So holding my breath was the number one challenge. And all I did was in the bathtub, just would go longer and longer every time until it was quite comfortable. And I remember when I was practicing, I would, because I'm an Elton John fan, so I would think um, goodbye yellow brick road so just to take my mind off it I would be in the bathtub just concentrating more on singing than holding my breath and then by the time the two minutes was up it was it, it was okay also I think it's a case of rehearsals and we, you know yourself when you're rehearsing something and then you have nerves so your hands are sweaty or you're so when you're anxious you're not going to be able to hold your you're not relaxed you can't hold your breath as long that is such a good point that you make yes because in the bathtub it was nice warm water under relaxed conditions when I did it live on television the water was quite cold um, and of course it's live television so your heart's pumping to start with anyway so yeah that's a really very a, a very good point that you make there and that is so true so but luckily I didn't need the two minutes and and I was out so that was good and another part of that trick to rehearsal not only was the rehearsal holding my breath underwater hanging upside down by your ankles for a period of time too that's really quite hard and uncomfortable it's painful and um it yeah. almost have very good padding around your ankles you know the mm. longer you're there and also you need the, the muscle tone in your legs to support yourself but even like the blood rushes to your head the whole lot so in hindsight I probably didn't um, prepare myself in although it went over well uh, not without a problem I probably did not prepare myself as near as, as well as I could have or should have. Well, congratulations. And I'm glad that it was a success. Oh, thank you. Thanks. About Penn and Teller. Going back, I think that there was a lot of preparation, a lot of staging, a lot of rehearsal and a lot of care went into each of your numbers. And they're all dramatically different. But I mean, clearly with the first number, uh, you know, you have specific handling, specific angles, specific, and yet it, it, it just came across so natural that, you know, nothing looked forced or, oh, I have to suddenly, you know, rotate my shoulder or, you know, turn this way. It was just really thought out. And that comes with a lot of rehearsal, you know, really thinking through your material. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And funny you say with the rehearsal, though, with the with Penn and Teller, with the second one, locking Teller in. There was obviously no rehearsal with that. Like I knew from my point of view, but no rehearsal with Teller. I did not know how he was going to react or what he was going to do or pen, how, how it was going to work. So, look, they're professionals, obviously, and they knew what they were doing. So they were fantastic to work with. And the last one, I only had a couple of rehearsals with, um, I only arrived in Vegas the, the day before we filmed Penn and Teller. Actually, I think it was just two run-throughs, one on the day I arrived, um, I think a couple of rehearsals just to get the filming angles right the next day, and that was it. Because once again, the boys from Thunder Down Under, they knew what they had to do. So it just all combined really well. But I think I think that you were very prepared. Oh, but yes, yeah, yeah, good, yes, very prepared. And I suppose that's slightly different to prepared and, and rehearsals two separate things although they do uh, um, combine together but being prepared is is the number one being prepared yep mm. 
that you can see it, you can clearly see it. And I think that's why you're just so confident. And it was just refreshing because it was, it was different and the magic was different, but also just you're different, you know, your, your approach to magic is different. Your, um, uh, your ability to just speak and, and be funny and, you know, quip to them. They're not used to that. And it, it was fun <laughs> to watch. Oh, thank you. My internet keeps start, it is starting to cut in and out for some reason. I've used all your bandwidth. I've talked too long. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? No, it's been, it, honestly, Connie, thank you so much. It has been such a wonderful chat and it's so nice to meet you. If you enjoyed this chat as much as I did and you haven't already subscribed and hit the notifications bell, please do so. Oh, and don't forget to comment. We love to hear from you and to receive feedback so we can grow and improve our Magical Women channel and project.